To do a factor analysis using PLS Graph, first you need to import the data. Go to File, Links, and then browse for your data. It needs to be in the .raw format. And then hit OK. Now you want to build some, indicate, uh, some latent variables using uh, this button right here. We'll build three this time. This first one, you're going to add indicators by right clicking the construct and clicking indicators. This one is going to be, let's see, attitude. I just held shift and clicked again, hit assign. I'm going to name it attitude. OK. And then this one. Right click it, indicators. This one will be, let's say, content. Call it content. Okay, and this one will be, what else do we have here? Intent. Assign those, call this intent. And okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to spread these out so we can see them just a little bit better. Because when we run the model, it's going to show us their loadings, and we need to be able to read them. There we go. It's not real pretty, but it works. All right. Um, and the first thing we'd like to do is go to Options run and change this to factor if it's not on factor um, when you're doing a causal model with paths you can change it back to path but when you're just doing a factor analysis use the factor inner weightings and then hit OK also um, a good policy is to increase your memory allocated to running any analyses in PLS graph so go to options and memory and just add a couple zeros to what's here already um, I've already done this but normally it would be right there 600,000 I think that's bits and that's not very much so you add a couple zeros to each of these rows here that way it won't run out of memory and crash which is a bad thing alright once you've done that make sure you save save often this is going to be I don't know um, factor analysis demo all right, and you can just click on this button right here to run. Hit OK. Voila, look at all these. We have lots and lots of loadings. Going to separate these out a little bit better. Now, right now, all of these constructs are drawn as if they are reflective. Um, in other words, the arrows are pointing outwards from the constructs. When in fact, content is a formative measure, so you would click on, you would right click it and go to reverse link. And then you want to run that again. Just a minute. All right. We can now see the formative weights and loadings for content. Now, as we're looking at these, we can see how each observed item loads with the other items and to what extent it contributes to this central theme. When it comes to content, it looks like this formative variable is pretty evenly balanced um, in how it's predicted by each of its constituent indicators, um, as, as evidenced by these numbers in parentheses, the 0 0.89, 0 0.85, 0 0.84, 0 0.88, these are all relatively similar. Now for these reflective constructs, attitude and intent, where the arrows are coming out of the construct, you want to look at the, the value outside of the parentheses. This is the loading. For the formative ones, we look at the weight right here. So for intent, for example, we have a nice high loading on intent 1 and intent 3, and they're relatively, oh, they're actually identically similar. But intent 2 does not 
um, does not move with them, we say. It, it does not correlate very well. And with these reflective indicators, um, you want them to correlate highly. So what we're going to do is simply delete it. Uh, select it and hit delete. And then run it again. We can see now that we have two um, very similar or identical indicators on this construct. So that works very well. We go over to attitude and we can see that attitude has a nice high number five here, nice high number one, low six, high seven, where are we? Yep, high two and high three. So we're going to get rid of number four and probably number six, but we'll just do one at a time. Starting with number six. Delete. Every time you delete one, you need to run it again because it will change how the others are correlated. Looks like number four is still a problem. I'm going to delete it. Run it again. All right, we're looking at the loadings here. These are nice and high. They're not all ex exactly similar. We have this 0.9 here, which is pretty high. But generally speaking, um, if they're above 0.7, you're in good shape. If you want to be sure um, that everything belongs, per se, to this construct, you can go look at the output by clicking this button. And scroll down until you see this outer model. You can see attitude, content, and intent right here. And what you want to do is look at the communal. Everything should be above 0.5 in this communal column. And it looks like everything is, so that's really good. You can also see here the loadings, as we saw on the graph, and the weights. And you recall for content, we look at the, the weights. <laughs> it looks like it's listed as a loading. That's OK. All right, and that's basically how you do a factor analysis using PLS Graph.